British ambassador to the United States, Karen Pierce, is joining us right now. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. As you know, U.S. officials say Russia is coming up against stiffer resistance than the Russians had expected. But uh, Kiev uh, tonight is on heightened alert. Uh, what is the British assessment right now of how long Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, can hold out amid this assault? Well, I think the Ukrainians are doing an absolutely heroic job. And as your, your photographs and, and documentary shows, uh, it's very difficult for them. But I think we have all applauded the resistance shown. I think it's right that the Russians are meeting more resistance than they thought they would get. Uh, at one level, President Putin thought he'd be welcomed uh, into Kiev. And now this shows just how wrong he is. Uh, we have moved our embassy out of Kiev to a safer place in, in the West. And I think anything we can do to support the Ukrainians in this resistance, our governments will want to do. Uh, you had swift on the announcement a bit earlier. I just wanted to be clear that the United Kingdom is part of that swift move. Yeah, uh, you guys are, have been on board for a while. Very, very dramatic and important move indeed. Uh, the Ukrainian president ambassador, as you know, uh, Vladimir Zelensky, he turned down an offer to evacuate, saying, and I'm quoting him now, <laughs> Uh, I need ammunition, not a ride. So what does that do for the morale from your perspective of the Ukraini Ukrainian people? Uh, I think it must be a huge lift to, to them. He's a very brave man. Boris Johnson, our prime minister, spoke to him uh, just a few hours ago, as, I, as did the president. Uh, we want to support him in any way we can. But I think when the people see a leader stand there and stand up to the might of Russia, that is going to have an electrifying effect on the Ukrainians. Yeah, you've got to give him a lot, a lot of credit for his bravery exactly. right now because he has self-pointed out he's target number one for the Russians and his family is target number two. The French President Macron, he's warning that this war, in his words, will last. Does the West need to be prepared to support Ukraine for the long haul? Oh, I think absolutely. You know, we are sending uh, more weapons. I want to stress these are defensive weapons. Uh, they are not to attack Russia. President Putin has this false narrative about NATO and Ukraine being a threat to Russia. We are nothing of the sort, but we will defend NATO territory and we will support the Ukrainians with defensive weapons, uh, with extra aid. We stand ready uh, on the humanitarian front. We have reinforced NATO forces in the southern flank. Uh, we, the Brits, have doubled uh, our presence in Estonia. We have sent ships to the Mediterranean, uh, and we have put Royal Air Force jets on standby. But we're also looking at what else we can do for, for Ukraine. Uh, we're sending other kit like body armor, and we stand ready to help in other ways. Uh, we've sent over $150 million, and as I say, we're ready to look at requests. Is Putin a war criminal? Oh, I have, um, I, I have a very long um, part of my career spent uh, dealing with um, war criminals uh, in the Balkans, and it takes an international uh, tribunal to decide uh, who is a war crime suspect uh, and who is not, and then there needs to be a trial. Uh, but I stress all those things to show that we abide by the rule of law. The person who isn't abiding by the rule of law is Vladimir Putin. You know, he's conducted this invasion. He's made up a false narrative as to how Russia is under threat. He's had the condemnation of the world at the UN and elsewhere. Uh, all over the world, ordinary people are coming out and wearing blue and yellow and lighting buildings in blue and yellow to show they support Ukraine. Uh, and this will not stand. However bad it gets in the next few days, we stand with Ukraine and eventually... Uh, eventually, this will come to rebound on President Putin, and it will be a strategic loss for him. British Ambassador Karen Pierce, uh, thanks so much for joining us.